Welcome back to Mission to Mars. This video will present the International Celestial Reference Frame, or ICRF. With respect to this frame, we will be able to determine positions and velocities of many celestial bodies. We will be able to do so through NASA's Horizons system. The following expression generates the vector acceleration A, velocity V, and position of a space probe orbiting a celestial body such as Earth. This expression is the vector acceleration A equals the ratio negative gm over r squared, with this ratio multiplied by the unit vector er, which points in the radial direction away from the center of the planet that generates the force of gravity. The vector acceleration A of a space probe is the rate of change of the vector velocity v of the probe with respect to time. This velocity is in turn the rate of change of position r of the probe with respect to time. The previous expression is valid only when the acceleration a, velocity v and position r of a space probe are always measured with respect to an inertial reference frame. In three dimensions, a reference frame is a set of three axes, shall we call them x, y, and z, and these axes are perpendicular to each other. An inertial reference frame is a frame that does not accelerate, hence it does not rotate. It can nonetheless travel at a constant velocity or be still. The International Celestial Reference Frame, or ICRF, is the current inertial standard celestial reference frame which is adopted by the International Astronomical Union. Its origin is at the body center of the solar system, which is still within the Sun. The x-axis in this reference frame points towards the region of the position of Earth in the autumn equinox. Typically, that occurs around September the 22nd in the Northern Hemisphere. This is the time when day and night have equal duration. As far as the spring equinox is concerned, that typically occurs around March the 22nd again in the Northern Hemisphere. The y-axis of this reference frame points towards the region of the position of Earth in the winter solstice. Typically, that occurs around December 21st in the Northern Hemisphere. This is the time when the least daylight and longest night occur. In the Northern Hemisphere, the summer solstice typically occurs on June the 22nd. That is the time of maximum daylight and shortest night. The z-axis is perpendicular to the x and y-axis and it points to the region of Earth's North Pole. For instance, on July 22nd of the year 2023, the following information is available for the position and velocity of the center of Earth with respect to the ICRF. X equals 72 million kilometers, Y equals negative 134 million kilometers, and Z equals 38,000 kilometers. And the speed of the center of Earth at that location equals 29,3 kilometers per second, which corresponds to 106,000 kilometers per hour. This information is provided by NASA's Horizon system. This is a web-based system that provides positions and velocities of any selected celestial bodies, from planets to moons to space probes. This information is then used as a set of initial conditions to calculate the motion of a space probe from Earth to Mars. The Horizon system is available at the link that is provided in this unit. 
This system generates astronomical information in the form of uh, ephemerides. That's the plural of ephemeris. An ephemeris is a table of position and velocities of celestial bodies. When the horizon system is accessed, the home page presents the user with five options. One, ephemeris type. Two, target body. Three, coordinate center. Four, time specifications. Five, table settings. Let's review these options one by one. The first, the ephemeris type. We will always select vector table for this type. This will provide the Cartesian coordinates and velocity components of the center of a selected celestial body. The second, target body. Click on the edit button. Enter the name of a celestial body, for instance, Mars. That should be done in a search field. And then click on the search button. A list of matching bodies is presented. Just highlight Mars for this example and then click on the Select Indicated Body button. Third option, Coordinate Center. Click on the Edit button and then enter exactly the following specification. 500 at 0. This should be entered in the related search field and then click on the search button. This will select the origin of the International Celestial Reference Frame, which is what we need. Fourth option, time specification. Click on the edit button that you will see. Choose a method for specifying output times as well. We will always select the specify time span option. Next. We need to specify the start time and the stop time for the requested ephemeris. The format of these times is year, month, day. For instance, for the 22nd of July of the year 2023, we would enter 2023-07-22. The step size is an integer, typically one day, when we wish to specify initial conditions. After all of these selections are made, just click on the Use Specify Time Span button. Fifth option, Table Settings. Click on the Edit button and for Select Output Quantities, choose option 3, State Vectors. For Reference Frame, select ICRF. For reference plane, select ecliptic XY plane. This is just the plane of Earth's orbit. For vector correction, select geometric states. For output units, select kilometers and seconds. And then check the option for vector labels. You will see two additional options, output TDB-UT, just leave this option unchecked. You will also see another option, CSV format, leave that option unchecked as well. The option object summary will have to be checked. Next, click on the use specified settings button. At this stage, the Horizon system returns to the home page and the ephemeris of the selected body, according to the settings that you specified, is ready to be generated. To generate it actually, click on the Generate Ephemeris button. The system will then generate on the home web page a table of position, coordinates and velocity components of the center of the selected body. To download and save these results in a text file, click on the Download Results button. In the next video, we will determine trajectories of celestial bodies and spacecrafts using the ephemerides as initial conditions. 
Thank you very much and goodbye. Dankeschön und auf Wiedersehen.